Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives about what's going on with their companies. Guys, if you've, unless you've been living under a rock, Chat GBT came out just before Christmas, and so the whole world is talking about artificial intelligence and how it's changing uh, our lives. But Fulby AI, who's got AI in the name of it, has been way ahead of this curve uh, from day one. And that's why we've got Rob Banson, CEO of the company, on to talk about it. What, a couple of just small sentences about what they do. They're a global leader in digital wallet pass technology. It delivers real-time data analytics and engagement through artificial intelligence to drive customer activation and engagement both online and in the real world. They've got the customers, they've got the partners, they've got the integrations, pilots, acquisitions, and the awards to back up that they're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. Rob, let's talk artificial intelligence. Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year, George. It's been a while. Good to see you. Yeah, well, look, Christmas was, hopefully you had a great Christmas and uh, and uh, and a great New Year. And I think we're back in the saddle to, to start running in 2023. We're not going to, typically you and I talk about pipeline, sales, funnels, all that. We'll talk about that in the coming days, weeks. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking about that. Let's talk about AI. I mean, AI is in the company name, but we've all kind of taken for granted all this time. We go, yeah, they use artificial intelligence and Rob works his magic. Now ChatGPT comes along and everyone's saying, who's got AI, who's using it, who's valuable? How critical is the AI component of your tech stack? I think it's a very big part, George. And, and for those that follow closely, they hear me say automation a lot. And we're able to shrink our operational burn rate in these things. And it's through these processes which we use. Um, where, where we look at it, I mean, I saw, you know, there's been some great stuff come out since ChatGPT. And, you know, for those that aren't aware of it, I, I would strongly suggest you go open an account and, and play with it. And it's kind of these things like Elon Musk always said that, you know, it's it's scary. It's going to take over the world. Uh, you know, AI is not going to take your job or ChatGPT is not going to take your job. It's people who use ChatGPT and leverage ChatGPT and OpenAI and these things that are going to take your job. Um, you know, streamlining management and operations and marketing and all of these things that it can do. This is where we've used this from the very beginning here. When we look at uh, examples of this online, we've seen forever um, people that bought this associated pairings and suggested items and purchases and baskets and, and all these things. And that's a lot easier to do, of course, when you're, you're talking about online commerce and software. Where we focused this was we gave bricks and mortar operators the same skills and tool sets that George is at the till. We then take that information. We then analyze all of George's interactions with our brand um, in that retail environment. We cross-reference all the in-store activations versus third-party activations basket composition, as we said, then we match that exact item in real time to George's receipt, to George's app, digital receipt, or wallet now. Um, that doesn't exist, that hasn't existed. And I think a lot of people took that capability for granted. The data processing side, you've heard me say ad nauseum for years now, unlock, leverage, and monetize your data. These are the things that big organizations, mom and pop organizations, they get bogged down with. I have all the data in the world. What does it mean? How do I leverage it? And how do I action to truly monetize it? It's even the same conversations I have today. Very large organizations, as you can appreciate. How do you guys leverage and monetize your data? 95, 96% of them, they don't because it's very costly, it's very cumbersome. So a lot of the data intelligence of what we do helps just that. It, breaks down and automates, provides real-time answers, much like you see when, give me an itinerary for visiting Greece for five days, where must I go? Brrr, pumps it all up. That's the world of automation. That's the world of machine learning and algorithms that are built, rules, logic. If this, then that. Early days when we would see injection of receipt intercept technology that we had. When we see a light beer, inject by light. Some of these things here that we're able to do from the physical bricks and mortar perspective, 
is, is transition a lot of this movement. And it's those companies as we see moving forward to become leaner, more agile, and truly offer these personalized experience. This is going to be the greater benefits of those that embrace AI for sure. You've got what? I mean, a four or five year jump because you've said a few times in interviews in the past that when you first started embarking down this path, people thought you were crazy and, and mm -hmm. they couldn't they couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, just because the rest of the world has woken up to AI, I mean, you and I have been talking about it a lot, but most of the world's just waking up to it. Can they, devil's advocate, can they catch up to you and say, okay, let's get some AI guys in here and let's get this going. Yeah. Are you so far ahead of everybody? Uh, eventually you're going to get competition, but how, how robust are you versus everybody else that's out there? I, I think, George, it's, it's how you use it. I mean, I get inundated all the time with, you know, company X, uh, you see them as a competitor. <laughs> There's, we have hundreds of competitors, probably thousands of global competitors on pieces of our technology of what we do. I mean, we, we do a lot. Our, our, our solutions have been purposely built to be vertically agnostic, meaning that they simply plug into any interface, any environment to light it up, connect and enhance their infrastructure. It's the outputs of what you do with technology that drive the utility and value. And that's where we've been very cognizantly focused on is this convergence of digital transformation for organizations, especially in these independent retail verticals of which we play. Um, simply because of so many silos, so many different um, data sets that are there to be looked at and aggregated. That's where we leverage it. Uh, I can assure you that when it comes to a data aggregation standpoint, uh, I know our competitors very, very well. Uh, and true real time is true real time. This is something that I've talked about forever. And, you know, I see some of our shareholders comment on some of our competitors' posts about misrepresenting true real time in that. And, you know, it's not really uh, probably our best interest, of course, but I think it's really, it's not technology. It's what you do with technology works smarter versus harder and where you position it, there's tremendous benefit and gain. Where do you see our AI growing even more so into the phobie tech stack? Uh, you know, I've, I talked about, we had an example in the past where I said, I had my wallet, my phone, I went to a Blue Jay game and it did, it all I had my ticket in there and I complained, or at least I identified, it didn't even tell me, hey, George, by the way, if you want to buy a hat, our hats are on sale for 20% off if you take this right now. And I always thought that would be a manual process. But do we get to a point when even the offerings are all just AI driven and you don't even have a manual process where it's just strictly uh, all AI and it eliminates a lot of the humans out of the process to to make your solution more robust? It is, and once again, to me, it goes back to utility. Um, people embrace technology when they provide, or when, sorry, they receive a benefit from it. We try to make business as easy as possible. Work less, make more. It, it, you know, music to the ears of a lot of these independent operators that we work with, George, they don't have very large teams. So providing automation and simplifying all these business and data sets that they do have helps them create this personalized experience when I service you better, you spend more money. That bond grows tighter and tighter. When I look at um, you know, product, market relevance, timeliness, couldn't be better suited for our technologies. You know, when we when we first started, if you know, what are we now, two years ago, I guess it was, and you know, wallet pass technology and all these things. Um, you know, we've seen Apple Pay surpass MasterCard this year. The adoption now and utilization of wallet will only get better um, where we look at providing as one tap experiences and whether that's loyalty, um, age verification, payment, access, entry. It's all the same technology built off one stack that's repurposed and leveraged. I think as we're going to now mobile centric, all the mobilization movement that we're seeing from not just retailers, but venue access and management with office and healthcare administration, big, big shift in this. And once again, it's, it's the AI that's gonna help recognize all these anomalies. And then machine has learned to teach rules and logic, if this, then that. Um, this is where it plays a big part, George. And it's worth noting, by the way, 
the mobile wallet pass business, the, the mobile wallet market business was about uh, 220 billion in 20, 2021. It's going to be close yeah. to a trillion dollars by 2030. You saw that because you made Pass Wallet, Campus Pass, Passworks, pass, all these acquisitions, and you got them at really good prices. Are, is that the secret sauce that they're all missing? Your AI component that, because I remember you kept on saying, we're going to take these on and immediately add value to them and make yeah. them even bigger. Is that, was that the secret sauce? I think the, the biggest part, George, is everything we do is fueled by data. Every engagement. I saw the wallet. I mean, obviously, we had tremendous help early days through AWS to build the infrastructure for a lot of what we do from a data architecture standpoint. But when you start to look at the benefits of the data and the architecture what we have, I saw the wallet as an activation channel. And we say everything is, you know, smart data in motion. That's just it. Everything's ingested, it's parsed, it's cleansed, it's analyzed, it's action, true real time, direct to that wallet. So that's whether your tickets, you're walking into the Oscars Academy Awards show, and you've got your security credentials and parking and all these examples of you gave at the Blue Jays game. Everything we do now is tying mobile ID to transaction ID. So when we look at aggregating your spend, your engagement on social, online, e-com, uh, mobile, in-store, in stadium, I guess in your example, tying that all together. So there's no point of me, you bought a hat at the game, you don't need another fanatics two for one hat offer right let's get you a jersey let's get you an autograph club or some other form of memorabilia you as a season ticket holder what beer cocktails soda and you know ready to drink what is it that george looks like today all they see is how much you spend on your seats they don't have that granularity to understand what you do from parking from gaming and lottery for 50 50 merchandising all of these different components will make up the environment. Uh, last question for you, because you're on a clock. I know because, and I'm so happy that you joined us because I want to have this conversation for a week and it's been good news and people should know I haven't been able to fit you into the schedule. Uh, so I know you got two minutes left. I've tried to ask you the best questions I can as concise as possible, artificial intelligence inside of Phoebe. What don't I know? And more importantly, what don't the shareholders know about AI, what should, what what what's something a nuance or or a big trend or a big change coming that we should be seeing for AI inside of Foby? Well, it's kind of not uh, where I think from our side, it's really about um, how do industries embrace it. You know, and I look at a lot of things. We saw at uh, Christmas time, George, we we saw a complete meltdown in the airline industry and travel. Um, you know, you've got operators that left people stranded for weeks, you know, due to snow, due to backlogs, computer systems going down, uh, all of these things. It's really about preparation. It's about understanding. Um, much like anything, emergency response, the sooner we have information, the sooner we can obviously provide a solution to the problem. I think that's where we see it. It's going to be an interesting year because uh, a lot of the industries that um, have been very antiquated and very slow to move are now pushing the dial to move. And you know, we're we're benefiting from this, of course, in insurance and banking and now healthcare. Um, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see where these go. I mean, the cost infrastructure of you know Chat GPT on AWS is three million dollars a month. Um, that's a pretty heavy nut. That uh, be interesting to see how they monetize it. But uh, for us, we're just focused on where we can of helping operators transform their business and future-proof their models. Rob, thanks for joining us. I know you got to run. Can't wait to have you back on next week to talk about how the AI competitive advantage is translating into the business side, which everyone wants to hear about. So until then, uh, good luck to you and go Cowboys on Sunday against your Niners. There you go. You'll need all the luck you can get. <laughs> See you, Rob. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and then leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel so you don't ever miss another great Agoracom small cap video.